You. Friends, welcome aboard the Cinelli Vigarelli. My steel, brakeless, track, fixed gear. It's a fixed gear bike. Here we are, another video not brought to you by Space Square, but it is brought to you by Toasty Rides. Toasty Rides here on YouTube and Instagram. Good bikes, real good bikes. Go check them out. This, as I'm sure you're all aware, is my Vigorelli. There are many others like it, but this one is mine and I love it. Okay, now, without a doubt, when it comes to my love for this bike, it has a lot less to do with the fact that it's, you know, that it's a, you know, it's a cool bike for sure, but you can buy them off the shelf. They're not like artisanally handmade by anybody. What really makes me love this bike, which is a common thread between every bike and thing that I do on this channel, is the story of how I got it and why it's better off with me. And that's why I can see my friend Ian, he's been on the vlog a bunch of times before, scoured Kijiji, whatever, came across this for 400 bucks, went to see the guy and bought it. Bike was too small for Ian. Ian was like, well, I know people who could use it. Eric, do you want it? And it showed up immediately. I was like, yeah, I want that. All well and good. I'm like, sick. I finally have something that's like, and then Ian proceeds to tell me what the guy who had it had planned on, he was like trying to turn it into like a two by 10 geared road bike. Like he wanted to, he wanted to like spread the rear triangle out to fit a proper road hub, try and get like a derailleur hanger on it. It was like gonna put, he's like, how do I get, how do I get cable stops and, and whatnot? Like he's like asking shops and everything. And then he was gonna drill a hole. He was gonna drill a hole through this. and. And I had it in my hands when Ian was telling me the story. No, no, leave it alone. Don't do that. Why would you do that? Just give it here, I'll keep it safe. You don't do stuff like that. End of the day, I think we can pretty proudly say Ian and I both saved this thing from a, like a pretty inevitable garbage bound fate. So I feel good about that. And that is why things that you own become special to you. I, I absolutely, I love the colors on this bike. Literally no matter the backdrop, it looks cool. It always pops. I also absolutely love this ride. It's short, it's not too challenging, but there are some hills. And there's like always something to look at. There's like people surfing over there. In the summer, this part, when there's like insane 35 degree days, it's always about 10 degrees cooler when you go ride by the water. Problem is right now, it's probably also 10 degrees cooler and uh, yeah, it's cold. Can't do that in road shoes. Look at it. Is my beard frozen at all? Can you tell? A lot of snot coming out of my nose. Did you know that Nova Scotia is like a surfing destination? It doesn't seem like it. A guy came up the hill as I was shooting that shot and he goes, Jesus, isn't it kind of cold to be out on a bike? You just came out of the water. <laughs> This 
cold. It's cold. Now, when I picked this up, like the night that I was bringing it home, all I could think of, all that was going through my head was, I'm gonna build this thing into the craziest, the most ridiculous race prepped machine. It's gonna be just like what all the pros ride. I'm not even gonna touch it till I get there. And that very quickly fell apart and became the epitome of two of my favorite sayings, one from David Freiberger, one from my father that I don't know where he gets it. First being, don't get it right, just get it running. I took all the parts off of my silver SE Racing 700C PK Ripper. All that was the thought that it's like, okay, I'm eventually gonna get wheels, I'm eventually gonna get a cool bar and stem. Um, you know, it's, it's gonna be sweet, but I wanna ride it now. Which is the second favorite saying of mine that my father would say to me when I was working on Volkswagens and saying, oh, it's only for a second. The most permanent fix is a temporary one. It has not changed from literally day one. It's the exact same that it's been. And I'm really glad that I did that first one, the don't get it right, just get it running, because otherwise it would probably, well, it would just be like sitting on a wall being talked about how it's gonna be sweet when I finally get to it one day. So if you're new here or you're just kind of curious and you don't know what this is, well, of course it is a Chinelli Vigorelli frame set. The, uh, the wheels are formula hubs laced with DT champion spokes. Front is an Open Pro, Mavic Open Pro. Rear is a Mavic Open Sport. Uh, oval seat post, specialized ramen saddle. No name stem, this stem is quite long. It's like 130 mils long, but I don't remember what it is. It's old Poseidon X bars. I don't think they use these bars anymore. They use like a flared bar, like on the Redwood. But these bars, while I didn't like them for a road bike with hoods on them, the uh, the reach on them is nice and long. It's like perfect for riding a hoodless, brakeless fixed gear with. Um, cranks, SRAM Omnium. The bottom bracket is SRAM GXP. It is, I think it's made of crunchy rocks right now because it's not good. Gear ratio right now I believe is 4817, which is like really, really nice for around here. But when I actually go ride with people, I'm like, ooh, it's not quite enough. And Shimano pedals, but these pedals get shared between many, many bikes. I always wanted to build a cool set of wheels for this out of profile racing track hubs and like zip hoops or really any carbon hoop, uh, really deep just like what the Chinelli Chrome team rides. Actually some head ones with like the proper decals would be really cool. Not very often that I would say I wanna look like a race team, but uh, because I'm a BMX fixie kid and I really like track, like fixed gear crit racing, um, you know what? I'll give myself a pass. I wanna look like them. Really good bike though, treated me well. Um, it makes me sad to know that uh, I got this at like Oh, probably at the decline of the fixed gear scene here. Me and my friends, we, we moved to like, we moved to gravel bikes and we stopped playing with fixed gears quite as much. Just kind of following suit with the rest of the cycling trends of the world, because we can't think for ourselves, I guess. Like we did the Cabot Trail on fixed gears and I did it on the PK Ripper. I would have absolutely loved to actually do it on this. Maybe I will again. But that's kind of the story of how I got this and kept it from being, you know, Something I think all of us would prefer that it never would become. And because of that, it's very near and dear to my heart. Like a lot of my other bikes, a lot of them have stories, but I think everybody experiences that to some extent with inanimate objects in their lives as well. So I don't feel that weird about it.